Welcome back. Uh, this was our last uh, project. We'll do uh, the next project uh, from this one. So, like we said last time, we work with console applications. So, let's see. We then want to go into variables. So here's what we've got. So we already know that uh, we've got things called variables and uh, there's a thing called scope. So the variable scope works as follows. If we've got a variable that's there, this we call a global variable. Global in that It fits anywhere within our program. We can have a variable that is there, that is within our brackets, but outside of the outside part of our code. This we call a local variable. It's local because it's only contained within our brackets. We can also have a variable that we can put and say it's there. This variable, we refer to it as a local, but it's also part of the main variable data type we'll explain this a little bit later when we go further in our learning but for now we'll leave it at that so what this then means is we can use any of these variables at any given point in time and we can give them values so for example we can say j is equal to 10 we can also say k is equal to 5. We can also say p is equal to 3. Right? This then means we've initialized all our variables and we can be able to see what each value does. So what that then means is if we put our print in, we can be able to see what each of these values do. Right, so we then say j is equal to percentage d and k is equal to percentage d and p is equal to percentage d. Like we did in the last part of the program, we simply put uh, our j, our k and our p so that we can see what this does if we run it using our console we then get to see j is equal to 10 k is equal to 5 p is equal to 3 so this then gives us uh, the different types of our variables but we then need to see how some of these things work so for example let's say we are to add uh, the next section that we'll still need to work with. Let's say we want an if. Right? An if can then be able to compare the two values to say j is less than k. Right? If that is true, we'll then get a print f that tells us this is true or false. right but if it's not true then it should not do anything so if we run it we then actually realize that j is less than k is not true right so actually then now need to explain what this is we are then saying j, uh, if we put brackets we put j is less than k 
and we put curly brackets to say this is true. This then takes us to the next stage that we actually want to work with, which is our operators. So our operators pretty much give us a list of certain things that we might want to add, work with, use, and be a part of whatever it is that we had hoped to work with. So the next thing that we actually want to now work with is our operators. And we'll also need to explain what the statement means, but we'll explain the statement at a later stage. As for now, we just now need to figure out what each and every one of these operators are or what these operators can be. So for example, we're then saying, uh, if we're adding to what we had last time, we're then saying operators in its simplest definition is a type of text that is used to achieve a desired result. Okay, so what results are we looking at? Let's say we want something that is true or false. We can use a boolean. Hence, we can have an operator that gives us either true or false. We want to be able to add, subtract, multiply, divide. We can also use an operator for that. We also want to have logic, right, to say either or, or we want to include and, etc. We also want to be able to maybe have assignments. So we can use an operator for that. So these are some of the things that we can actually work with and say uh, is part of our operators. But sorry to take you back. There's also something that we could have actually done with our uh, variables. We'll include it as part of our operators as we go along. But let's uh, proceed from where we are. So, for example we can actually change certain things, right? Uh, we can change and state that, for example, we said we've got int and character as our data types, but there's another data type that we call void, right? Void uh, simply means it's a value That is unknown. Okay, so this void, let's actually just copy it and put it to our notepad and we leave it as that. We'll try and actually create a, a, a project that uh, shows us how we can actually work with void. Actually, let's do it now so that we see how void works. So we can actually create a new project. We select console application. We click on next and then we say void usage. Click on next, click on finish and here's what we've got. So what do we want to see what void does? We simply change void main. We can actually use void main like that. If we run it, we'll be able to see the same output that we had before. But we'll still need to have more content that will tell us a bit more about void.
So I just thought I would let you guys know about Void and that is what we have so far. Let's return to our old project. So if we've got projects like this, this is a new project. This is the project that we're working on. We just simply need to double click on it and uh, we go back to it and we can be able to then run it and see what each of the things do. Right? So given that we've got these, we want to see how some of our operators work. Right? Um, for example, we had actually said we've got Boolean. Right? If this is false, right? we are saying if J is less than K, we want this to be true. If it's false, we also want it to be printed. So we can simply put an else, and then with our else, we have a printf that tells us the following. Tells us that this is false, like that. Um, and if we run it, we'll then notice that uh, it tells us that k is less than uh, j is less than k. It tells us this is false. How is this working? It's simply working in that it compares the two values. It compares j and k and then if this statement is true, then we print that first portion. If that statement is not true, then we print the second portion. So that pretty much gives us uh, our Boolean uh, output. Although this is not the best way of doing it, we we'll actually need to have a way where we can actually put a Boolean type um, code. I will add that code a little bit later on. I had not prepared for it, but uh, let's uh, go to the next type of uh, operators. We want to be able to have the ad addition operators. Right. How do these work? We simply need to have our variables and we we'll then need to have a, an output that we want. So in its simplest form, we can actually then say printf and with our printf, we'll do the following. We'll say, let's say we want p plus k is equal to percentage d. We put a new line. We can do it in that way. And then we say p plus k gives us our answer. Or if we don't want to do it that way, we can simply say the following. We can reassign all variables and give them the following. We then say P is equal to J plus K. And we put uh, a semicolon. Uh, in other words, we reassign the variables. Put a print F. We open and we close brackets. After opening and closing brackets, we then do the following. The result is percentage D, put a new line, put a comma, and then we put our value for P. That way, if we run this program, we're supposed to say P plus K equals percentage D, where we say 3 plus 5 should give us 8 for this line. And then P is equal to J plus K, which means we are taking 10 plus 5, which gives us 50. If we run it, we're supposed to then get our results. So our results will be as follows. Um, the result is 15, which is 10 plus 5. That's correct. P plus K, which gives us 8, which is 5 plus 3, which gives us 8. And then we are actually on the right track. Okay. So the next thing we also want to see is these, or this was for the addition operators. Let's just do uh, the rest and see how they work. So for the rest, we want to maybe just work with this and just change the operator and we see how each value uh, gives us a value. So this we can then say minus this we can then say multiplied 
uh, this we can then say divide like that so that when we run it we can then be able to get different values ah, it's still giving us the same value because uh, we made an error here because now P and K have got different values so would need to uh, correct one thing uh, we call this a syntax error because we have changed this part and not that part so we would simply need to put minus there we simply need to put multiplied there we simply need to put a divide right there so that when we run it we'll then get our values as they are so we are simply now saying because we had modified the value of p at that point which meant p is now uh equal to 15 we are then saying 15 minus 5 gives us 10. uh 15 multiplied by 5 gives us 75 15 divided by 5 gives us 3 which is our operators so in other words let's actually change this to mathematical operators so that at least we know that these are dealing with math related